What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to my Volvo V70R. This thing is almost complete, but I've owed you guys an all wheel drive service video for a very long time. And today is the day where I explain exactly how to fix your Hald X3 all wheel drive system on your 2005 or whatever Volvo V70R. And I hope this is helpful because this service is a pain in the ass. If you're new to the channel, thank you so much for watching. And if you like what you see, please hit the big subscribe button down below. That really helps us out. And give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy it or find it informational in any way. Um, I'd also like to thank this month's sponsor, Avalon King, with their product Armor Shield 9. This car actually has Armor Shield 9 all over it, and it is a really good product. Um, the application that we have is not great. We are going to strip it off. We're going to do a complete redo of the Armor Shield 9, which I know is a good product because I've seen it. It definitely has amazing hydrophobic properties. Uh, it's definitely kept the paint intact for a couple of things that I've done to it uh, already. I park in a big garage, as you can kind of see. There's nobody around right now, but uh, it definitely has helped with some dings already. And if you want, you can save $25 on the Armor Shield 9 kit by clicking the link in the description below or going to armorshield.com and using the code SHIFT. 25. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to get this car up in the air in the rear and show you exactly what you need to do. This car actually has the all-wheel drive completely working. When we did the build on this car, Ben McNally and the guys up at Rolling Motors in Connecticut, they fixed the all-wheel drive system for me. But I promised you guys this video because I wanted to show exactly what needs to be done. I have written instructions and if you want, you can click the description below or go in the description below. There's a Google Drive document with some detailed instructions on how to do this yourself um, I didn't do it myself because well the car was already in the air being built by Ben and I asked him if he could do it and he said yes I purchased the kit from FCP Euro there's a full Haldex 3 service kit on fcpeuro.com and any part on there as you probably all know at this point is lifetime warranted so definitely go check that kit out get everything you need but let's get this car up in the air I'll show you what's going on underneath and with a little time-lapse help from rolling motors can show you how to do this fix. So without further ado, let's get underneath and let's check it out. So I'm sort of stopping in the middle and for those of you wondering why I'm using the hand jack and why I'm even in my parking garage and parking lot at work in the first place, it's well, it's because of this. This is why I can't really get into my garage right now. We're actually redoing our deck in the back of the house. And this is up front. This is all the lumber for the deck. And that's the old deck kind of just sitting in that dumpster. So yeah, I don't really have access to my garage right now. So back to this guy. So yeah, let's get it up in the air and let's get underneath because my garage is inaccessible. Okay, we're underneath. First things first, that hand jack sucks. Really wish I had my hydraulic jack with me, but at least I brought two jack stands and we should be perfectly safe for just climbing up underneath here to do this. I have my handy dandy instructions so I can actually tell you guys what's going on. Right here is the exhaust pipe. Now, the exhaust pipe comes all the way through and all the way up to the front, obviously. But right here is your drive shaft and your drive shaft actually is what needs to be disconnected for this service. So the first thing you really need to do is get that wheel up in the air, which is the front wheel. Um, What's going on here is that wheel needs to rotate for the drive shaft to be able to rotate because if you see here, there's bolts there that attach the drive shaft to this carrier bearing. And the carrier bearing is what connects the whole thing to the whole deck system. So first things first, get the front passenger wheel off the ground. Um, this one is directly linked to the angle gear to the drive shaft. So having it in the air lets you actually rotate this drive shaft freely. It'll just make the job a little bit easier. Um, once then, you need to remove, once you have that done, you need to remove basically the exhaust. That's going to make it a lot easier. You'll have a lot more room to work with um, because this is very, very close. You can see I can only get like two fingers between, not even. I can barely even get two fingers between there. So what it's going to do is free all of this space up to get rid of the pump and to change all this out. So um, what you're going to need to do is take the... Um, exhaust off then you remove the drive shaft from the companion flange now what you do is it has 
these six millimeter Allen bolts. And with every pair of bolts holds a retaining bar, or sorry, uh, with every pair of bolts holding a retaining bar itself. The Mac, an, an impact here makes this a breeze. So if you have an impact wrench, um, just basically crank these right off. It'll make the job a whole lot easier. So you'll wanna buzz them off and then rotate the drive shaft around to give you access to all six or else you're going to be fumbling around up in here with trying to get room and there's really not much to work with, which is why you want that wheel to be able to rotate to rotate the drive, to rotate the drive shaft. Next part is you actually drop the drive shaft here. Um, and remove it from the companion flange. Uh, you'll need to drop the center carrier bearing to allow enough flex to remove the rear drive shaft flange from the companion flange. To do this, you'll need to remove the cat back exhaust, which I already said you should do in the first place. Um, any, any exhaust you really should do. So just remove any exhaust you have. It'll make the whole, whole thing a lot easier. Uh, once the exhaust is clear, around the midpoint of the drive shaft is a heat shield that's held to the car with four 12 millimeter bolts. Uh, inside the top curve of this, remove the two carrier bolts first, then remove the four heat shield mount bolts. It will it will all drop down. Um, be, uh, and be careful when you do this. Slide the drive shaft towards the driver's side, so you're gonna actually wanna push it to the other side of the car. You'll have enough room to play with the drive shaft flange and slide it out past the companion flange. So then, the drive shaft will be all the way off the car, and that will give you access to the flange, which is exactly what you need to do to get to all of this back here, which is the whole Hall X3 system, and it's sort of a pain to get to, as you can kind of see and kind of tell by the time lapse and by the instructions that I'm reading because it's very, very difficult. Um, next, you remove the companion flange. The impact wrench is a dream here, and obviously a lift, <laughs> because to be able to get to this makes it a lot easier to have it way up in the air. Um, the retaining nut is 24 millimeters. Buzz that off of the impact and then basically you're, you're, you're almost there. Uh, you'll need a three jaw, three inch gear puller with none of the jaws attached. Uh, you'll hold it onto the companion flange using the six millimeter bolts and retaining bars. Um, tighten the bolts down to hold the puller in place, then use your impact to drive the puller, and that flange will come off like butter. Now, these instructions were sent to me by Zach. Um, you know him from the, the why I'm basically a, a Volvo fan for life is because of the community. He's the guy that basically sent me all these instructions and found an interesting way to do it. So, once you have that all done, um, it's easy, from here, it's basically easy. Um, Once you have all of this done, you can have the car in neutral. Uh, the driver's side AO, the driver's side is, on the driver's side of the AOC housing, halfway up the housing, there's a 13 millimeter bolt. It's the forward most bolt in front of the diff. This is the fill plug. So now you can probably see it on this side. Let me just swing the camera around. You can see that up there. And that's the rest of the system. And basically you're gonna wanna change the filter out, change the, uh, pump out. My pump was bad. The, right here, my pump is bad, and right here you can kind of see the, let me scooch in a little bit more, the pump actually is blocked by the carrier bearing and flange and where it connects to the drive shaft. So, right here, you actually cannot get rid of the pump and change the pump out without disconnecting the drive shaft and doing all this goodness. So, once you do that, you know, you can do that. But if you can actually get to this side, you don't need to change the, and you don't need to change the pump out, then you can kind of do all this without having to remove the drive shaft. But if you need to change the pump and get to the carrier bearing and do all this other goodness, you need to basically disconnect all that. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, that's it. Uh, I'll link it in the description below. There's two places I want to send you guys. Volvo Sweden has a really good Hald X3 service video. Uh, I believe you should go watch that as well. If you found this informational in any way, shape, or form, um, I think you should go watch that because that gives step-by-step -step instructions and uh, he shows you how to do it. It's not exactly an R, but I believe it's an XC70 and it's a similar service so you can kind of watch that. Um, there's also another one I found on an S80 which shows you sort of a not really great way to do it. Um, so uh, both of those things should be really good information. I'm gonna get out from underneath here and kind of wrap this video up and tell you a couple things that's going on with this car. So I've come back inside my garage here at work. It's way less windy than up top and it is also a lot cooler because it is scorchingly hot outside today. It's like 90 plus in New Jersey, which if you know New Jersey, that means it's basically 110 with the humidity and I'm dripping with sweat just from sitting there on the ground. So 
back inside, but the car is performing amazingly. We have the front sway bar installed uh, because it was installed at the dealer. I don't have the appropriate tools to drop the subframe for that, but the rear sway bar, it turns out I don't have the appropriate tools for that either. So we're gonna have it done by a local shop. Um, we're gonna be able to film it, which is really cool. And I'll tell you all about that. And then this thing is mechanically finished. And I owe you guys a time-lapse video. And that is the next video you're going to see on this car is the full build time-lapse from soup to nuts. And there will be a very cool announcement at the end of it. So stay tuned for the next video on this car and you're gonna wanna watch it to the end. Apart from that, this video is over. Thank you so much for watching. Merch in the description, check out below. We have t-shirts for the S60R, the V70R, the C30, and hopefully some new products coming very soon to the shop. You can also check out Hellwinkle, which is our new moose mascot, hopefully for the Volvo community. We have stickers available, we have t-shirts available, phone cases, whatever you want. It's down there in the link in, at the Teespring link. Go check it out. Um, go check out the rest of the build series on this car. I'll link it in the card above somewhere in this video. It definitely is very, very cool to watch to see how this car is transformed. And if you haven't seen the dyno video of this thing, you're gonna wanna go watch it. This thing makes 440 horsepower at the crank, 361 at the wheels, and it sounds epic at wide open throttle. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you next time. See ya!